Disney. I would like to welcome all of you to the Park Streamers Hangout tonight. Bob, Danny, and Cordy are dear friends, and I know they have an amazing podcast for you. So thanks for joining us tonight, and enjoy the show. Well, hello everybody. Happy Monday to you, and happy Park Streamers Hangout. I think we're on episode 17, if I'm 18. not mistaken. We're on 18 now. 18. 17. <laughs> so welcome everybody. Um, I think we've all kind of had busy weekends one way or another, but um, we're happy to be here today. So we just want to start off with um, introducing everybody here. I think you know everybody, but just in case. So am I pointing the right way over here? We've got the import cast. Yeah, other side, other side. Other, yeah, <laughs> anyway, that way. Go opposite. Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, all of them at Theme Park Casual. So I hope to see you guys all out there. I, I, I'm actually having really, really fun um, on Twitter right now. So it's usually usually not, not the funnest place, but right now I'm having fun with it. So okay. they color me intrigued. All right. So <laughs> <laughs> and down below we've got Very Place 28. Hey everyone, uh, you can reach me at BerryPlace28 on X, Facebook, uh, Twitter, oh, I said Twitter already, that's X, uh, Instagram and YouTube, and next to Space Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Cordy in California, you can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch. All right, so we have a, a fun-filled show for you today. Um, a lot of a lot of things happening. I think as we get into the year, right, as we get towards summer, we start to have some, you know, a, a lot of activity at the parks. Um, so we want to start out with something that I think we're all really um, anxious to see, right, at Walt Disney World, and then soon after that at Disneyland. But um, you know, we've gotten previews of the Tiana's Bayou Adventure, the animatronics. So um, we thought we'd start off with that and. Take a look at what's going on. Sure, let me go ahead and bring up the video for everyone here. So this is the We Call It Imagineering um, YouTube video. Um, Walt Disney Imagineering has their own uh, uh, YouTube site, which is awesome. And this is, um, we're gonna not show you the whole thing, but this is all about uh, the audio animatronics that they're building, especially the ones for Tiana's Body Adventure. So here we go. What Walt Disney Imagineering does is right there in its name. Imagineering, which is a combination of imagination, the creative side, and engineering, the technical side. You bring storytelling and technology together, and that's what you get at Walt Disney Imagineering. Rob, Heather, how do the two of you work together to make this masterpiece? Well, we battle. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a collaborative <laughs> dance. Yes. Yes. Collaborative There's a lot of back and forth. I will get to create a performance and it looks great to me and Heather comes along and puts the costume on it after the fact and then I can no longer do exactly as I've been doing. If I'm trying to create a bit of movement in the wrist maybe, it might obstruct the costume, the costume might obstruct the animation. I might change the animation, Heather might change the costume. It's both things working in balance particularly on more difficult areas like an elbow or a wrist. There's a small motor, there's a lot of animation, that's where a lot of the life comes from, but the costumes can be restrictive. So we have to work back and forth with each other to make sure that we can clear all those things and bring the character the life it needs and still maintain a good costume. Her wrist will actually involve, I think, three motors. A twist going this way, and buried up here, we've got two motors that will give us the back and forth this way and this way. I'll come back in and go, yeah, that's that's great animation, but then you can't 
quite make this happen because she's got her shell, she's got her costume, it's gonna bind. So then we work together and maybe he backs off a little bit, I give a little bit, we end up with a beautiful dance. Walt Disney still inspires us to this. Oh, I'm gonna fast forward so we can see some of the other little characters they have. So this is uh, Lewis. I'm Sonny, I work in service development. Right now I'm working on Lewis. How do you go about creating something as large as Lewis? He is one of the largest and most dynamic figures we've built today. There's a lot of moving parts. You know, we've got this area that moves, this area that moves. So you have all of these layers. If you got fabric and all have to be like in sync. So mm -hmm. this falls down into here, this falls down into here, this comes up together there. And that all covers the motors, but as he's bouncing up and down, they're all moving in sync. But it also keeps the support of the costume and lets the costume ride over that because all of these are animated. It's all part of this functionality. In the past, we've had hydraulic, pneumatic, but he is a fully electric figure, so the tolerances and the movement that we're getting from these electric motors is spot on. So we're using a lot of new materials to create and bring these characters to life using what new technologies we have. I mean, we're able to do that lifelike look. That's the Disney difference, I love yeah. that. So, Pascual, I would love to know a bit more about how you kind of get Lewis to work. I'm a figure programmer, and the figure programmer is the Imagineer who trains the figure. We make sure that the figure is mechanically ready, all the cables are properly placed, every shell cannot collide, and once that's ready, I can make sure that the figure actually can properly move, so the figure can get all the range to make sure that everything that we are designing every step of the way is true to the creative vision. One of the important ones is also like the head turn. So we will come here during our checkout and we will make sure that actually Louis can move. Let me show you this. Hey Louis, I just want to check that your neck is all right. So we will have Louis playing a part of his show, but only with those actuators. So we can test that everything is working nice with him and he can actually perform his show. So when we put the costume on, we will repeat the process again. This Louis actually is gonna be the first Louis that our guests will see when they go down the bayou. Let me show you a little bit. It's not completed yet, but he is gonna start greeting our guests and telling us, hey, I'm hearing all this music here. And that's why he's such a complicated figure, right? We're moving all this massive body with just keeping up with the music of New Orleans. So Jess, can you tell me about how you actuate very detailed so type of- Go ahead and pause it, see if, um, I think Lewis might be the last one because they just only showed uh, Mama Odie. So, yep. So that's basically, uh, you know, what um, they showed. And obviously there's been clips and you've seen them all over uh, YouTube and TikTok and it seems like everywhere. But I don't know about you guys, but one of my favorites is Mama Odie. I think she looks spot on and looks amazing. Yeah, I think that one partially it's because of the glasses. So there's not the big cartoony eyes that the other character, the other human characters have. So it really kind of can kind of mask the cartoony aspect of it. And yeah, when you see her moving, it's almost creepy how well she moves. It, it mm -hmm. looks... I mean, it's talk about lifelike. That's what's crazy. So it, it and even just watching the the thing right there with Lewis with all the different parts. And when you see him, you know, when he's moving the neck and it's all the different pieces that are sliding around together, it's it's pretty impressive. You know, you, you, you've got to say that the, these these figures are not um, uh, America Sings era animatronics. So. This, this this could be something that's pretty spectacular in the ride. I'm I'm hoping that it is. The the yeah. one thing I do do caution is that, at least at Disneyland Splash Mountain, the logs are moving pretty quick through most of the scenes, and so going through before you were like whipping your head around to try to catch all the different characters, and you usually only had a few seconds to watch. So um, I'm hoping that we're able to see and feel all of this incredible movement that they've spent the time and money to put in. I'm hoping it's not the kind of thing where you see, you know, a quick hand move like that, and then you're already past Lewis and you don't get to see all of his neck mm -hmm. and the movements that he's able to do. So I'm hoping that they're placed properly so that you can get a decent amount of time of watching them. I'm going to come back to Lewis, but 
Cordy, what'd you think? Um, you know, just kind of thinking about, I know we've talked about that um, before, you know, the cartoony look, right? Like it's a little exaggerated, but then in thinking of when this is in the ride or in the attraction, right? Like you almost, it's almost like when you're performing on stage, right? The makeup is exaggerated because the distance. And everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you kind of have to. So I don't know. I don't know if that was part of the reason that they did it, but it was just something that kind of popped in my head just now thinking of, you know, that that may be part of it. Because when you were saying how in Splash Mountain, we kind of went through pretty quickly, right? So you're like, okay, turn, turn, turn. Mm -hmm. So if maybe if the features are exaggerated, we it's kind of, you know, that perspective, right? You're like, oh, okay, I, I, I saw more than, um, it feels like you saw more, right? right. That you spent more time mm -hmm. looking at that scene. So I don't know, maybe. So, um, and I don't know if you noticed or heard in that video, but they said, well, that's the first Lewis that you're going to see as he greets and, and is talking mm -hmm. to everyone. So it kind of makes me wonder, is he going to be telling the story kind of like you know how sebastian tells the story in the little mermaid is he going to be coming out and kind of greeting everyone talking to everyone and as we go through it we see more of the story um i, I don't know it, it makes me wonder if that's what they're planning on doing well yeah i'm curious where he's going to be placed because like you said yeah he's he's the first one you see but that doesn't necessarily mean on the ride they could, it could be a Buzz Lightyear or a Mr. Potato Head situation where he is at a spot where he can kind of start to give you the story and start telling you what you're about to experience and what's going on, but not actually in the ride. So you do have time to watch and, you know, see all the movement and everything the way you would with a Mr. Potato Head or the Buzz Lightyear. True. So that could be well, what that one is. Where are going to put that? <laughs> They'll find a way. I mean, technically, if, if you figure at Disneyland, when you go up the stairs, you've got that landing that looks over, they could enclose some of that and put them in there. Mm -hmm. That would be, you know, still close enough for everybody to get a good look at him. And it's, an, you know, possibly a, a decent amount of time. You might have a couple minutes there waiting in line right. and it would be, you know, far enough away that people wouldn't be able to, you know, grab him or anything like that. That's just a, that's just a quick off the cuff idea. So, so I think one of the other things they did is they also showed a bunch of the new characters. And I know we didn't see all those characters as far as the animatronics, but let me share my screen with you from the Disney blogs because it actually shows six new characters they have. So we have Octavia, uh, looks like it's a bobcat, an older bobcat, Papa. You got uh, Claude, who's a bear. Uh, you got another bear named Bernadette. Uh, you got the younger bear, Sebastian. And then you've got, uh, is that a fox? Coyote? What is that? Maybe a fox? Pina? I, I don't know. <laughs> Does it say down there? Wait, oh, it's got, no, so, it says right here. Uh, oh, it's a gray fox. Gray Pina, fox. The gray there we fox. go. So yeah, so you got black bears, you got the gray fox, and you got the bobcats. So those are some new characters. It looks like they're going to be playing instruments while you're on the ride and uh, performing for you. Uh, who knows if that's happening during the ride or is that happening at the you know end? I would, it looks like probably during the ride, I would think. Yeah, I remember them having some little scene where there's Tiana and then off on the side, there's like a little dock or something like that. And there's a bunch of the animals kind of hanging out there. I can't remember if they had instruments or not, but. Mm. And then they also showed uh, the new poster for the Walt Disney World uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. And um, I, you know, what? I don't something. like it. That I don't like to be there. I was about to say it's the same a thing. terrible, terrible attraction poster. It, it's it's to me. I mean, I know they're trying to make it look fun with Mama Odie and the animals and and Lewis there, you know, playing instruments. And what's interesting is it looks like they got a couple fireflies. Not well, neither one are Ray, obviously, because he's no longer with us. But um, like, I love the way the Tiana's Bayou Adventure the logo looks. But then you look at the mountain. 
And of course, it's not supposed to be a mountain because it's supposed to be a salt mine, but it doesn't look like that. Um, and I know this is just an you know, animation drawing, but uh, there she is in her outfit. Um, she's kind of blocking the water. And I, I've heard some people talk about why is she blocking the water? That's the main exactly. part of the attraction. Yeah. You know, that, that should be part of the fun. Like in Splash Mountain, they had, you know, Br'er Fox, Br'er Bear, and Br'er Rabbit in a log, you know, splashing down, getting wet. You knew it was a water ride. Here you're like, okay, is this a, it's Tiana's Bayou Adventure, but is it a water ride or not? Right. Um, and then, of course, you've got, you know, her, her restaurant and, um, you know, down below, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Just team, mixing even the, even mixing the illustration styles is weird. It it's is like pick one or the other and go with it, you know? And then oh. I, I, for me, if you look back at the classic attraction posters, the really great ones, what do they do? They show you people on the ride. They show you the ride in motion, what you're going to be dealing with, with the attraction. You know, you look at the Splash Mountain, it's got them all in the rock at the big splash. You look at Thunder Mountain, it's got the people in the train rock and rolling all over the mountain. You know, Space Mountain, it had people. In it. It's just, I just don't get where this, I could see this one as a promotional piece, but not the official attraction yeah. poster. That's the thing. And, and I, I don't know about you, Cordy, but I'm kind of hoping that maybe this, like, you know, Danny said, this is just a promotional piece that they're throwing out there and then they'll have the official one, you know, later that looks a lot better. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It, it doesn't look like an official one. Like it looks like something, I don't know, like they might hand us. <laughs> right. That's what I said. It's like a promotional piece. Yeah. Those little, you know. Well, the start. other thing is too, look at the bottom. In Walt Disney World, this is going to be in Frontierland where here it's considered New Orleans. So for us, it fits better, but you know, they're, they're playing the song, you know, down in New Orleans uh, on the outside of the ride in Frontierland. I just, I don't know. It's just, just weird. We had a couple of um, comments and questions about like oh. a nod to uh, Critter Country, the MMBs, and then um, also I think Paul, Oh, the, so the animals are there to make the attraction qualify for Critter Country. So I think we did hear that there there would be, right? Or is that just something we've all, <laughs> maybe we've all talked about, but um, I thought that we were pretty sure they were going to leave some of those, right, little Easter eggs in there for, and, and of course, repurpose, you know. So one of the things I just read today is that um, right now, they are not repurposing any of the Splash Mountain, you know, uh, animatronics and or or anything from that. I'm sure they're going to. I'm sure we'll find something. They've they've, they've got to leave something behind. But I'm just kind of hoping that it actually they do have some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So Mike Wheeler said, um, actually, I think uh, Disneyland it's still in Critter Country. They're not changing zones. So thanks, Mike. Yeah, and I think that's um, to Paul, I believe he's the one who said it, that they're kind of cramming the critters in there to qualify for critter country. And mm -hmm. he also mentions that the whole, what is, let me see, I, I just find the whole intended mythology of Tiana is kind of flaky. You have Tiana from the movie and animals and lots of food. And it, it, it is kind of a, but th this, is, this is the problem when you're taking an existing attraction, leaving it fundamentally the same attraction and just giving it new decoration. It, it, it's it's tough to shoehorn in something that it wasn't supposed to be that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I have the same issue with Guardians of the Galaxy at, at DCA. You shoehorned it into this building and it so much of it doesn't work simply because it wasn't meant to be that. So you had to figure out a way to force it into that. And so you had to come up with, you know, in Tiana's case, you have to come up with this backstory and this other thing going on. And, you know, it's a different part of her life kind of thing. And it just, it feels like such a stretch that yeah. it's, you know, I mean, everybody's going to go on. It's a log ride. Everybody's going to have fun. The animatronics are going to be amazing. And who knows, it may end up coming together just fine. But from what we know now, it just feels very, 
very much one of those things where it's like you're trying too hard at something that you, you never should have even been trying for personally. Right. Oh, speaking of which, uh, you guys have brought up, let me bring it up here. Um, the pictures for, oh, there's the picture right there with uh, Tiana and uh, the critters playing on the platform mm -hmm. next to her. So kind of, I, I don't know if this is what it's going to be like, but this is kind of a picture of, you know, what it, I guess, a rendering of what it might be like inside the ride. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, one of the other things I thought was interesting too is, um, and I know this is <laughs> kind of a joke that someone put out there on the internet, but you know, they've got the new building and this is the artwork they put on the outside and someone put, you know, <laughs> kids artwork next to it. And it, it kind of, you know, I hate to say it, but it kind of looks like that. It's not a very, <laughs> I don't know. It's it, to me, this is not the building I, I would expect to walk into, you know, going on to this ride. Um, I don't know. To me, it seemed it would be cool if you like walked into Tiana's restaurant and found out what's happening and why we're going to go on this adventure. And then it leads to the, you know, salt mine that we're going to go on this adventure or something like that. Not sure what this building is. Um, in fact, I'm trying to hard just as main entrance. Um, so I, I don't know. This, this artwork to me doesn't really go well with, uh, with the yeah. Ride. I mean, again, main, what, what is the main entrance? I mean, is this, you know, a, a wonderful factory tour kind of thing you know what i mean hey, this is supposed to be like, this is supposed to be a salt mine you know it, it's it just it, it just seems so weird mm, like i said I maybe know. when it's all done it'll make sense but from this point of view right now it's not making sense to me and i'm not even and i'm not even trying to be you know a hater or anything I'm, I'm literally just trying to, you know, I'm looking at everything that Disney in the past has trained us to look for, trained us to think about, and this seems to be flying in the face of it at this stage. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the problem I have. It's like, it's, it's not that, you know, I don't want a Tiana ride or whatever. It's, I just don't understand what they're doing with what we're seeing. Yeah. Also, I was kind of wondering, you know, they brought this um, for Walt Disney World, and I was kind of thinking, well, are they trying to do this? So, because look, if you look at the uh, picture of Tiana on the left hand side, um, she looks like she's in Frontierland, the way she's kind of dressed up. And then the other side looks like what she'd be dressed in, you know, um, in New Orleans kind of, uh, but, you know, with a jacket or not. Well, they just had a jacket, but. I was wondering if they're going to do something like that and just keep her, you know, more like, you know, the, the frontier land style, but obviously we've seen the animatronics, but they, they haven't really said which animatronics are for what they just said, Oh, here's the animatronics that we're going to be putting out for Tiana's Bayou adventure. So who knows? I wonder if they're going to have some different uh, animatronics for the different uh, locations. So Mimby's asked if um, she wonders if there will be a scary element in the ride, like, there was with Splash. And didn't we, we, I think we talked about that in a past episode that that wasn't really kind of what we heard, right? Yeah, there is no, from what we understand, this is post movie. So therefore Facilier and all of that whole aspect is not available, basically. Be the story would not allow it because it's in the past. That would be bringing in a character that has already met his demise. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Do you but, think they, they give us a new villain to go just with the ride? I, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like, but it, it, they could turn it to have the, the splashdown be the exciting fun part. And rather than go with a, a doom, and gloom kind of thing, like, oh my God, we're going to go down this thing. It's like, you know, we're getting ready. This is the big moment. You've all been waiting for it. This is going to be the funnest thing in your life. And woohoo! You know, it, they could go with that angle. And that's perfectly fine. They could. But I, I, I think there's, oh, <laughs> if you look at some of the comments online, people are kind of like, you know, they, they, they were expecting a facilier climb to, you know, friends on the other side kind of thing and yeah. perhaps that's too obvious maybe you know people you know the and i know there's a lot of imagineers that don't like the book report style attractions which is fine 
you know, that's, that's an opinion. It's valid that it's like, you know, I saw the movie. I don't need to have somebody just replay the movie in front of me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they come up with these other, you know, ways to extend the characters, the franchise, the stories, and this is what we're getting. And like I said, from where we're sitting right now, it just doesn't make sense to me, but I also have not seen the full effect, been through the queue, gone on the ride and, you know, experienced everything the way they want me to see it. So I'm going to reserve judgment. Like I said, for me, I'm just looking at the different pieces that we've seen and they, a lot of them seem to go against what the tried and true uh, philosophy of Imagineering has been throughout the years for the great attractions. Uh, so Mike Wheeler said the lift of the final drop is Mata, Mama Odie's area. Right. So it could be a, you know, getting you ready for a fun time kind of thing. I don't know. Okay. Well, we will, um, we'll keep our eye on what's going on and, and bring you, you know, any breaking news that we find. So um, I'll, I'll be really, um, I'm really interested to see what Walt Disney shows us right what we get to see there and i know it'll be different but at least we'll at least kind of have some a little bit of an idea of what they're <laughs> yeah what, i mean little little by little i mean we're gonna obviously we're gonna see disney world first so yeah. that's gonna have you know a little bit of a different effect on those of us here on the west coast in that you know we'll kind of see what we're going to be getting yeah and it'll it'll be it's going to be interesting at that point because we'll have we'll 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 be we're not going to be able to go into it completely blind. Let's put it that way. So, you know, it's a uh. <laughs> So Terry says 8:30 p.m. here in California, feed the cat, it's hungry. Sorry, that was my cat. It's <laughs> my, my wife is in the other room and she shut the door since I'm on the podcast. And so it's like, "Oh, what in?" So <laughs> she's just waiting to get into the room. But thanks, Terry. <laughs> All right. So I think um, something that's going on right now, um, we're going to move on into Star Wars Season of the Force. Um, pretty, pretty busy weekend. Friday was the first day and we changed over to Hyperspace Mountain. We got our new new scenes. It was interesting, the Star Tours. Um, <laughs> the Star Tours. I haven't seen them, so... What That's why I said like interesting. <laughs> and um, fireworks were to start on Friday, but um, you know, weather weather permitting, um, lots of foods, lots of merch. So we're gonna dive right into that and kind of go through some of the goings on this weekend. I don't know if we want to start with. Um, I don't know if you had anything. I think we should start with the cutest thing, and that's okay. the droids. I mean, those things <laughs> are so awesome. So this is from uh, Theme Park Casual's Twitter page. I'm going to bring it up. It gives me just a moment to do that. I think it's pretty pretty awesome and pretty cool. Um, and I think he got a really great shot of these droids. So let me share this with you, and I'm going to blow this up. And here we go. Okay. And for only two thousand dollars, you can have your own version. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure those are those are a little more than two thousand dollars. I know, I know, Just a little more than that. But yeah, seriously, those those little guys are absolutely adorable. They are the cutest little things. You are captivated the entire time that they are around you. And if if you could see the crowd that was surrounding everybody, I happened to to kind of catch them as they were moving along. So I was able to get a front row um spot right there but they they come all the way around from like where the droid factory the, over on that side where the restrooms they come out from over there come all the way across and then make their way over to the garage area where the land speeders are and so they they basically make that whole little trek all the way around and then they kind of hang out in the garage area again you know let people you know they kind of walk around do their little things 
Um, in fact, one of them, when it was time to go, the little green guy, um, one of the land speeders has like the two, two fins that stick out. And so he goes and gets in front of it, squats down and backs up underneath in there. And so she's all, she calls out his name and she, and she looks and she's all, are you hiding? And he shakes his head. No. And it's like, it's just the cutest little thing. I mean, they're so fantastic. And I, I was telling um, Bob and Cordy earlier that part of what this land needs is that life. Those things that are moving around, those fantastical moments of things you don't get to see every day. You know, and this was one of those things where everybody just enthralled and it was and it, it, everybody was a little kid when those things were walking around. Let's just put it that way. Everybody was grinning. Everybody was taking pictures. Everybody was laughing and giggling at every little thing that they were doing. It wasn't just, you know, something for the kids, you know, OK, yeah, go, go check it out. It's you know, stupid. for me. No, it's all the adults were there everybody was watching them and just enthralled the whole time and here's the other thing while these guys were coming out kylo ren and the stormtroopers were out just off to the side uh, sabine ren had come out early just a little while before that uh, chewbacca and ray were walking through the marketplace we saw boba fett there was just a ton of life happening in galaxy's edge and it felt i think for the first time for me the entire land was coming alive and it was feeling like, oh, my God, I'm in Star Wars. And these are a lot of characters. You know, the droids, they're brand new. They're not, you know, oh, I remember them from the movie or nothing. No. Sabine Wren, I don't even, I couldn't even, you can ask the chat. I didn't even know how to pronounce her name. <laughs> I, you know, when, when. So it's, it's the kind of thing where it's like, they just need this stuff to be happening so that this land can reach its real potential. Mm -hmm. Because it's been a you know, just a kind of a blah pass through. You go on the ride, you might grab a, a drink or a snack, and then you're on to the next land. You're not really hanging out there too long. And this this is the kind of thing where it was, I, I could see myself, you know, with, with this kind of life happening, if it was going like that the whole time, there would be days where I would be happy to go grab a coffee and go sit on one of the tables and just watch all the kids and everybody interacting with all the characters and everything. So I really hope that this is the start of something and it's not just this, you know, little six week season of the force and then everything goes quiet again. I really hope they don't do that because this is this is the start of where this land needs to go. That's yeah. my opinion. I don't know if you guys have been able to catch any of the interactions with the characters like that when there's that many of them. Like I said, there was literally, you know, like half a dozen characters feeling like they were all out and there was like crowds around each one, which made it great. Yeah, no, they need more of that. I don't get there very early, uh, early enough to see a lot of, that a lot of time. But um, I have. I would love to see the droids. And even Terry uh, commented earlier, uh, versions in the gift shop for the holiday shopping season for sure, which is true, right? Definitely. The well, I believe they. I believe they do sell the BD one droids, don't they? I think they have those. They but they do could like maximize that. They could do like he's like you know holiday. Right. You could have them Not ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Not I mean, but, yeah, but they they need they need to be able to you know capitalize on this because like I said, this is the start of something. It feels like this is where the land was supposed to go, and I think just all of the you know 2020 and all of that stuff that happened just kind of threw everything to you know just put it in chaos and you know had to pull things to a grinding stop, and then you have. You know what happened in Florida with the Galactic Star Cruiser messing things up over there? It was just a ton of money that they wasted. But this is this is where this land was supposed to go, and there's a lot, a lot of potential there now. Mm -hmm. Well, these are the droids we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. I mean, the, the, you you guys have no idea how cute they are. I mean, seeing them on video is one thing, but when you're there and you're seeing it, it is just like. And so, somebody in, in the Twitter comments said, you know, how do they make sure nobody wants to get, or how do they make sure nobody goes over and kicks them? And I'm like, when you see them, you, you, you don't have any thoughts of that. There is none of it's, I want to go give them a hug. 
I want to go pat them on the head. I want them, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to feel what it feels like if they walk all on my back, you know, kind of thing. It's like, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, you, you, you want to go play with them. You don't want to kick them. There, there's, there's none of that. Not to mention there's like, like probably like six extra security people and mm -hmm. they're not, they are not very shy about telling you where to stand when the droids are walking by or they were, you know, sir, can I have you stand behind that line right there where they're going to be coming across? I need everybody behind this crack, please. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. They were serious <laughs> about it. They, they, but what was cool was the droids did feel like they were getting right up close to everybody. And, you know, it, it wasn't you. like a, you know, you got to be way back over here and whatever. No, they, the droids were, you know, just a few feet away from you. How tall are these droids, by the way? Cause I haven't seen them in person. I, I they're only them. about two feet tall. Yeah. They're not very, they're not very big. That's what makes them um, amazing is it's like, they're so tiny, you know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's like, okay, there's nobody in that. That's a real robot. You know, that, that's what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the really cool thing was, is there were a couple of times where because of the, the texture of the ground, they were losing their footing. So you got nervous for them a couple of times where, you know, they're walking along and you can see them kind of stumble and kind of stutter step. And you're just like, ha, 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 don't fall, you know, kind of thing. you don't want to see the little guy crash. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, it, there's, there's a wonderful, um, weird to say, but a human aspect to it, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a tangible type of thing. And it's, um, I think I, I was talking to Eric Schwartz, who we we hung out for a little while. And he was there while we were while I was filming that, and I was telling him I was like, you know, people will book their vacations for the rides, right? Rise of the Resistance, a new land it opens. People, that's what's going to have people book their vacations. But the memories are going to be of those little droids and their kids interacting with them. It's going to be the stormtroopers coming up and talking to the kids and stuff. Those are going to be the real memories. Those are the special things that you can't get anywhere else. And that's the difference. And that's why I said, I really hope that Disney can pay attention to this and realize that this is where this, if they want to capitalize on Star Wars, mm -hmm. especially in the parks, that's where this land needs to go. It needs to get to those special moments with the characters and it can't be very sporadic. It has to be, you know, almost like flood the land and let it be, there's life at every turn. There's new characters, there's new aliens, there's new robots, all kinds of stuff. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the, the ones from the movies or the shows, just give us really cool, fun stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll get off my soapbox now. They should have had the Ewoks roaming through there. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. I know. Um, uh, one, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say I, I I hope I can catch them one of these times if I'm there. When what what was the like latest time? Did you did you notice? Um, I don't know what the latest time was. Um, uh, I had a friend, um, EJ's Adventures, um, had let me know he that he heard that it was going to be around one thirty, and they didn't come out until probably closer to one forty five ish. So. Okay. That was when we caught them, but I don't know if that's a set type of thing or if they, mm -hmm. you know, adjust each day just to throw people off and have it at different times so they don't get, you know, swarmed at, at any certain time. But yeah, um, that that was when we caught them, but I don't know how many times they come out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's literally I probably about 20 minutes of the, you know, walk over to the garage area and then they kind of do a little thing there and then they're off stage again. Okay. Yeah, because I'm going on Wednesday, but you know me, I usually go at night. However, I'm going on Friday morning, so I'm hoping sometime Friday morning I'm going to be able to uh, catch the little droids out there. That'd be awesome. Those BDX droids are amazing. So, yeah, I, de I definitely try to, you know, try to schmooze a cast member, you know, and try to find out, you know, hey, what's what's the schedule for the droids today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I, I know that we're getting hounded by Hope because she wants to talk about <laughs> about something important. And that is something that we're going to talk about next, which is Fire of the Rising Moons. So just for Hope, let's go ahead and talk about uh, 
you know, the, the intro for that. So during the fire of the rising moons, villagers and visitors alike come together to celebrate their freedom and to honor the heroes and legends who came before them. As the skies over Batu light up in bursts of color, iconic music associated with tales from across the galaxy ignites our imagination. It's a powerful moment you won't want to miss. There you go, Hope. <laughs> Yay. So with that, we do have some footage that Cordy shot last night um, of Fires of the Rising Moons that we want to share with you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and share that. Did We'll play the little intro and then maybe we'll fast forward a little bit. Yeah, so. I was going to say, and this is, of course, I wanted to see it from in front of the Falcon, right? The main main viewing area. Um, but they also have a spot set up by, um, why can't I think? You know, the dark side over to the right, right? They have it. Oh, by the first order. Oh, uh, yeah. By, and, and so by kind of the red. Set up over there. There's an area and they have it kind of, they, they taped it off as we were standing there. Um, it was a little awkward because people were still walking back and forth to <laughs> smugglers. So they were trying to right. like go through the crowds. And then there's also another area where I've watched fireworks from before this, all of this. Um, over by, I guess it would be the garage area, right? Where there's the land speeders, right? The little area mm -hmm. over there. So they had an area taped off there, but that's a really nice place to watch fireworks from. If you don't want to be, especially if you don't want to be in with all of the crowd because you get a really good view, you know, the, a sky view of the fireworks. All right. Well, with that, let's go ahead and open this up for you guys and play Fire the Rising Moons. And this is the intro part. Smugglers and scoundrels, pirates and rogues, travelers and adventurers, welcome. My name is Toha Mage, the Lore Weaver. In Black Spire, I found refuge and my home. And though I am long since gone, through my droid and friend, Bard, my voice and my stories live on. Black Spire Outpost has a long and colorful history of heroes and legends, Jedi and Sith, royalty and resistance, those who would rule and those who refuse to bow. Here, we celebrate that fiery spirit tonight. Those with lights, raise them, and everyone, prepare to raise your voice. Oh. We honor the spirit of Black Spire, the fire of the rising moon. To those who would bring darkness, know this, now and ever, we bring the light to the spire.
So we uh, fast forward just a little bit. Yeah, it's um, I, I honestly I have to say because I did watch this on a stream Saturday, but seeing it live is it's a whole different experience. Like those gaps, like you kind of get like, oh no, did they can't you know? Even though we know from Wondrous, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have those right. gaps, but. So that's what I was going to say. For me, I, I like it, but it's like, number one, all that exposition at the beginning, they could have trimmed that. That, that, that. We didn't need to know the guy's name and all this stuff. It's like, just just get to it. We get it. You know, you, know, you don't need to do all of that. And which, if they would have done, played a little bit of music, and in that gap, use that to give your little spiel, much better. Well, my whole thing is they're giving us a character we have no connection with, and we have no idea who this person is, really. And if we knew a lot more about them or if they were a fan favorite, like, you know, Luke Skywalker or something like then we'd be like, oh, oh, OK, this is cool. We're hearing from you know, one of our favorite characters and boom, we're going to the show. Um, that's that's kind of where I felt like it was missing in that spiel part. Yeah, but everybody wanted yeah. to raise those lightsabers when he said it. Now, something that like cool. that. I was going to say cool. that that is the fun stuff. That's what mm -hmm. people want from Star Wars. You know, that's that's the cool thing. But like I said, for me, it's like there's just a, it, again, they're shoehorning in something that wasn't built for what they're doing. So mm -hmm. there, there's got to be a little bit of an understanding that, you know, I, 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 I get it. They're trying something. But at the same time, it's like I'm, I'm going to critique it the way, especially when it comes to fireworks, I am a big fireworks fan i love the disney fireworks shows so when they do something like this it's like you know what i'm gonna get nitpicky mm -hmm. and i understand i'll probably be the only one complaining about certain things or looking at things a certain way mm -hmm. but that's just me and you guys have all come to know that and so i hope i'm not surprising anyone when i'm you know taking those tiny little things that you know people are like i wouldn't even have noticed that at all that's fine <laughs> well, why don't we finish watching the finale here and then we'll talk about it a little bit more because there's a few things I think that we all want to say. So, yeah. Okay, so that is that. <clears throat> so, Courtney, you were there live. Let's get let's get your point of view because you you actually saw it live. Um, like I said, it was it was a definitely different feel than watching it on the stream, right? Because you know how you know how loud the fireworks can be, but with that music, it was kind of nice because it wasn't popping your ears <laughs> with the fireworks because you have the music instead. Um, but I I liked the flow of the soundtrack too like it, it kind of went you know in sequence right you got the celebration right we've won <laughs> you know as it's going towards the the finale um we did talk because brian sevilla was there so we were kind of talking after and he brought up you know because i was like oh you know it's only you know during season of the forest and he was saying that gustin had already you know posted something about this is ongoing like this isn't something mm -hmm. that's gonna you know go away after the the season of the force so that's good to hear 
And I know we've heard all the talk about like, you know, I'm sure they'd love to have drones, like something like that. Zomembi's even mentioned it in the in the chat, right? Like if you had like, you know, drones, what was it? Like starfighters, like, you know, just something, another yeah. element to it, which we know they could add. Um, and I think um, we also, I think Terry said that, um, you know, it's it's all new, right? They can, they can kind of change things here and there, right? Get feedback and see where they can improve and, um, so I think they're, I would hope, I'd like to think that they're always thinking of ways to, um, you know, improve these things. But I thought it was, I thought it was wonderful. It was really, really fun. It was fun being with, you know, all the people were excited in that area. And um, I I think it's, regardless, having music with the fireworks, because we were seeing the fireworks anyway. So to me, it was just the point, like, oh, we've got music. So, hey, <laughs> right. a bonus. And um, hopefully that'll help spread out the the people in the parks, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wondrous, I did notice at the castle, that was a lot lighter. It was Sunday and it was a little bit of a lighter crowd in the evening, mm -hmm. but it was lighter in front of the castle because people were trying to watch in Batu, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I actually brought that up. I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen because if this had turned turns into the place to watch the fireworks now, what does that do to the traffic patterns and everything that happened at the park? Because now you've got, and it's not a very big area that mm -hmm. they have that are, that are prime fireworks viewing areas in Batu. So I was, I was curious what would happen if everybody said, you know, Batu is the place to watch the fireworks now <laughs> that, that would have, that would have affected a lot, you know, going forward. Not to mention it's like, okay, well now what do you do? Because everybody wants to watch the fireworks over here you know, do you adjust your show to match what's happening at bat two and then let the other show be the, eh, it kind of goes with fireworks sort of. Yeah. And I think just as a reminder, I, I'm sure everyone knows, but it is this, the same exact, it's the same fireworks show. Like nothing's different. Right. They just, they added the music. So I know, um, you know, if you're feeling like it should be a little bit more, it's like it, it <laughs> it's shared. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. it, you know, I mean, well, that's why I'm curious what's going to happen when they shift to the Pixar Fest because the fireworks show changes, right? Well, you know, but I did look. I did look up a, a, a quick video of the previous um, Pixar fireworks, and they start with the same fan fireworks that come out okay. at the very beginning. So it's still, but the will still work mm -hmm. at least at that part. Uh, before I give my two cents, uh, GV five five nine says maybe they could have some characters out during the fireworks. Or before or after, I think that would be great. They they need to have more characters at night. I I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I, gosh, man, there's so many things they could do with a fireworks show in Batu to make it right. just amazing, cool. Obviously, it takes a lot of money, and <laughs> but you know, hey, it's not my checkbook, right? Checkbook. You know, how I'm, old am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen the fireworks a lot over in Batu before they, you know, had. Uh, music and then and i was always one of those people who said hey they have music here it, it really you know make mm -hmm. a difference mm -hmm. and it's funny because i i haven't been there I, i'm gonna obviously i'd like to go um this week um to see it uh, either wednesday night and or on um friday night uh, to go see it and the thing is that now that i've seen the videos now again like cordy said it's different when you see it in person but I kind of felt it was a little lackluster. It was like, okay, you've got fireworks that are happening, you know, at the same time of, of you know, Star Wars music. Star Wars music is great. I heard some people in social media this past weekend going, oh, it gave me the chills, you know. Yeah, the music is great, but the fireworks didn't go in sync with the music. Right. When you have Wonders Journeys, those fireworks are going in sync. You know, when you have Pixar Fest, the fireworks are going in sync, et cetera. So, if they had fireworks that were going more in sync, and I know that you've got two different shows that are going on, but to me, it just seemed like ugh, it was it was cool, but it wasn't as great as I hoped it would be. It's right. great hearing the music. I love hearing the music, the iconic music. Um, you know, they played a, a lot of selections of the popular Star Wars music, but I just wasn't, I just wasn't, you know, ooh, an odd like I thought I was going to be, and I was so looking forward to this. And again, I'm going to go see it in person. I'm sure I'll. I'll maybe like it a little bit more seeing the person. Yeah. But the other thing is too, the lighting on the rocks, they kind of did a little bit of lighting 
but why not change that lighting because the fireworks aren't going in sync let the lighting go in sync you know something that just like oh oh okay this is cool i like how they're doing that maybe even you know uh, not to go cheesy but you know have some lasers or something you know that that would you know be a little more pizzazz there on the land to you know um you know to make up for the fireworks not going in sync um if they had lights that went in sync people probably wouldn't care about the fireworks not going in sync um yeah but yeah, there's know. there's there's so many ways that they, and this is the first weekend. You know, I saw people putting in the chat that you know maybe they're going to be listening to the feedback and making adjustments as they go, which is fine, and I hope they do, because yeah, there, there's you know it, it has to be more than just you know the really amazing Star Wars music and random fireworks going off. Yeah, I mean, it, if they were really going to do it right, they would have the the Star Wars music. But they would turn it, and Fire of the Rising Moons is such a bitchin' name. That is a very, very cool name for a fireworks show, in my opinion. I think that is a perfect name for this, but it should have been something that centers around, you know, give me, if you're going to have this guy at the beginning telling me that he's the lore master or whatever it is of Batu, work some of that into this show. Yeah. You know, yeah. have have projections of, you know, symbols and stuff. And, you know, the warriors of blah, 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 did this. And then, you know, right, then right. Bah, 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 you got some more fireworks going off. And then, you know, and then there was the battle of whatever. And blah, 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 blah. give me something like that, you know, work, work it into a show that doesn't feel like uh, we're going to just slap some John Williams music and <laughs> shoot some fireworks. We're good. You know, um, that's. That's where, like I said, I'm getting nitpicky. I know, but that that's that's how I would have viewed this. I'm looking at it from the standpoint of okay, it's a show. They were trying to do something. Don't go completely halfway with it, and that's what this feels like. It feels like they went halfway. Yeah, because like I said, and you mentioned just now, is that if during that lull where there's no fireworks, what if they had the lore master talking about those things? That would be kind of cool. Something interesting. They're still playing the music, you know, maybe lower the music a little bit, have the lore master right. tell you a story, or maybe it's a story we already know or some stories and, you know, the different battles and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, think about it. The ending, if they talk about, you know, and then Luke well, Skywalker, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they go into that whole thing and people would go nuts. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, look, look at the end of wondrous, you know, when Pooh comes on and, and the narrator mm -hmm. says, Oh, but Pooh, you know, <laughs> right. It's just the beginning. I mean, that's like, woo, I like it. Yeah. If right. Luke came out and said, you know, may the force be with you or even that, I mean, people would probably go nuts. <laughs> Paul I'm sure says, he's on the money. It's, it's, they probably just wanted to do, this this is what we're doing and let's go from there because yeah. all, all of the points are valid like i would even think like the projection part I, in my opinion i don't know if if all that show should be in that area just because i like the storytelling because mm. that i don't know something's kind of intrude on if they're trying to keep this land like we're off planet if they really want to keep that we can't start in. I don't know. I just feel like you can't start doing. Well, see, that's the thing that, that somebody brought that up too. That it's like you know, why are they playing the Star Wars music from the movies when these people would never have heard that music? Because we want well, it. Well, well, I, <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like. Well, hold on a second. Because do we know that they haven't heard this music? Because there's <laughs> exactly. the whole metal, you know, the metal ceremony at the end of well, Star Wars, and they're <clears> playing <throat> music. So yeah. maybe. Yeah, but but two is set in the first order era, not in the you know past. So it's kind of like, really? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they, again. It. I think they gave us what yeah, they gave I us. Yeah, I mean, come on. How, how, and that's the thing. It's like, it, it, as much as, you know, I'm nitpicking, John Williams' music, random fireworks, it's still going to be awesome because of it. You know, okay. it's John Williams, Star Wars music, things exploding in the sky. You don't, it, you don't need much more than that. I'm right. just, like I said, I'm being nitpicky. <laughs> well, and you know, it's something that makes me wonder too, and I've been thinking about this for a while. So you know how they got people to go over to um, Rivers America because of Fantasmic, you know, and that got people to go over there. And now they're doing fireworks over there too. You know, you do the projections of the fireworks and you can still see them. It's great. You know, I'm, I'm sure that they're trying to do this. It's another outlet to put people in another right. section of the park. 
Um, but I just hope that they take the time to take notes and improve. Like Paul, I knew it just said, and I know I posted it up there, but perhaps an Im Imagineer or two mm -hmm. are watching right now, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good, good discussion. Good chat. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to rip it. I haven't even seen it in person. I just think it's a great idea that wasn't well executed from what I can see, but Hey, maybe I'll have a different opinion when I see it on Wednesday or Friday night, whenever I happen to see it. Uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it and I want to see it in person. It's different than being, in, you know, see, watching it on video. It's like, you know, like the Captain America show they had last year. I never saw it. I never got a chance to see it. Every time I went to go see it, you know, I couldn't get in, <clears throat> but mm -hmm. I saw it and it, to me, it was okay. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what they do from here. And if Star Wars night, if they give us, if, if we get a surprise and, they do something a little different or if we get the same thing you know because right. there's no official uh special fireworks for the event right that was posted so uh, i'm curious to see there but yeah i definitely i definitely think seeing it in person then come back so in two weeks everybody come back and hear what uh bob and danny have to say yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping i'm hoping we get fireworks wednesday night i'm planning to be there wednesday so Hopefully we can can check it out. Yeah. But, yeah. Now we do have some merch. Do you guys want to talk about that? Sure. So this is the Disney store. Um, and this is the merch they're coming out for May the 4th. Be with you. Um, and also they're going to have some of the stuff uh, during um, Season of the Force. Uh, so these are some of the artwork and, and shirts and magic bands and tumblers coming out. Um and I, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to go through and look at some of these, you know, different artworks, designs, but Will Gay is the artist who's created this. Um, I'm not a huge Will Gay fan when it comes to, you know, his artwork um, for anything. I mean, it's okay. Um, but I kind of feel like it's a little too cartoony for Star Wars. Um, even with the way C3PO looks, um, it, I don't know. Again, I'm not trying to rip it. There's some things that are really, really cool. Obviously, I love the the glass uh, picture um, here that Will Gay uh, created. That's really cool. I think that's really, really neat. Um, so he does have some cool things. Obviously, the hoodie uh, for women, I think. Can is you really click cool. on that pink hoodie? It wasn't there, but everybody was talking about it, and we, we were actually looking for it. Okay. Yes, I do want it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to, okay, to me, yeah. this, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. What you were looking for, Cordy? <laughs> yeah. Who was trying? Wait, who? Wait, someone's got to be in the chat. Who was trying to show me this? We were looking all over the um, Star Traders for it, and it may have been sold out already at that time. I think it was PJ, but that's cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. See, to me, I mean, it's not bad. I, it's a little too cartoony for me, like a comic strip, I guess, uh, yeah. for the artwork. But I mean, it's still cool. I mean, I know my daughter would love this. She would probably want to, you know, I don't care if it's, it's, a, uh, it's a hoodie for women. She'd probably still want it and say, oh, it's pink. And it's got my Star Wars characters on it. I, yeah. I want it. So but Those are so cute. I have the, I was trying to find my um, lounge fly because I have the one, you know how like the, uh, a few months ago, uh, last year sometime, they kind of had that series. And I don't know if it was that popular, but I loved it where it was, you know, Leia right. and good Han Solo. So. Yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. Yeah, and then you got the Grogu backpack, uh, which cute, and the lunch tote, and then you got the sling. Yeah, that was actually surprising. the The hoodie did not have Grogu on it. Um, probably because it was set in the <laughs> original trilogy time. It looked like. But these are some of the things I have. Now, the other, oh, oh, sorry. This is the men's hoodie right here. And then they also have a jacket for adults. Now, I think this could have been really, really cool. I mean, obviously, this is very much like, um, you know, what you see when you go on to uh, Rise of the Resistance. Resistance. But, you know, obviously with Darth Vader and the old Stormtroopers. Again, it just and just not my type of style of artwork. Yeah. I think it's cool. It's a great, you know, idea. Um, I don't know. Just yeah, it's not it's not my style either. Really? I'm kidding. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, let's, um, if, if we if we have a chance to talk about the Tomorrowland merch, oh, we yeah. we are. That's, so they have that's the my limited, style. 
I don't know if you can access that from here. I know it's in the app, but they had the um, the exclusive merch too with the bucket hat and the crossbody. That um, uh, I let's see. I think it might be in here. Let's yeah. Check. I, was say, I don't think it's on the it's on the Disney. Oh, it's not on the blog store, but it should be. It might be there. Not that stuff. Um, yeah, it's on our it's on our app. Like you have to go to the portal for the season of the force. They were doing. Um, mobile order um, back on the third, right? They started the third and you could pick it up at. Um... Uh, so this is uh, the force force and telling Vader. He has 40 different responses um, to yes or no questions. Uh, you just push his head uh, for your fortune. So I thought that's kind of cute and interesting. Um, of course, you've got your Star Wars inspired accessories collection with uh, the Citizens Imperial Stormtrooper watch and jacket. <clears throat> and that's an EcoDrive technology watch. I'm not sure about that jacket. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the uh, Micro uh, Squadron Gungan Bongo Submarine and the Micro Galaxy Squadron N1 Starfighter figures from uh, Jazzwares, which is... Um, I'll go to it real quick. So it's the Micro Galaxy stuff that you can purchase. I was never really into the micro stuff or the micro machines. Oops, sorry. I meant to share this tab, but this is this is it. And then uh, going back to this tab. Uh, now I thought this is interesting. This is your Darth Vader and Stormtrooper, the old Stormtrooper. Uh, inspired holiday animatronics. <laughs> so he's got a candy cane lightsaber, Darth Vader does, with a <laughs> Death Star ornament, right? And then you've got your stormtrooper holding a candy cane as a gun with a Santa hat on. And these are Darth Vader standing at seven feet uh, and six feet for the stormtrooper. Um, and they're interchangeable accessories for Halloween, Christmas. They have lifelike movements. Seasonal sayings, sound effects, and more. So interesting. Uh, and then you got your available soon at the Disney Store, the Sith Apprentice Darth Maul Legacy Lightsaber set. That will be coming out. Um, and it's launching on May the 4th. And, of course, you got the new Star Wars Icons Vader book that's coming out. Uh, and this book um, is actually going to... Talk about uh, the character's journey from his genesis in George Lucas's first draft of Star Wars to Anakin's tragic fall to the dark side in the prequel trilogy and beyond. So, oh, that's what that's it, huh? You know, I would would have thought. You know, let me look for what you were talking about real quick. <clears throat> so, I'm trying to see if it was somewhere else too. What, was it on the Disney blog or no? It was just. Um, I think I saw it. I saw it on the app. Is just the app. I originally saw it, but it has to be out there. Um, season of the Force. Exclusive. Merch. Mm. You know, it's funny when I type in Season of the Force, uh, nothing comes up except for the Fire of the Rising Moons. What the heck? Yeah, maybe they, maybe it is just on the app. Um, but I will say the crossbody I have not seen yet because um, Brian had the, the bucket hat. But he actually bought it in Star Traders. You, like I said, you could mobile order it two days prior to the uh, whole event starting. But um, and that was the new style, the is it Will Gay? It's that bucket hat. It, I think so. Let oh, me here's a bucket hat. The black oh, one. Wait. Yeah. Did you want to see that? There, I found. Yeah, that, yeah it's like. Hold on. Let me uh, bring up this page yeah. real quick. Do, 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 right. do, While do, you're do. doing that, I'm going to announce to all three of our chats real quick. Um, our good friend, the Rogue Attraction, is two subscribers away from 3,000. So if Ooh. we could just go ahead and go and push him over that little edge real quick for us, that would be awesome. Yep. The Rogue Attraction is a good friend of the channel, and we'd love to see him reach his 3,000 sub 
tonight. That would be awesome. Okay, so yeah, this I'd, is... I'd like to be able to say that, you know, I helped him get there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to go okay. unsub and then resub so I could be number 3,000. <laughs> oh, there's the cylinders that uh, Theme Park Casual was talking about earlier. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't even bring that up yet. Should we? Well, let's go back. Hold on. Well, I was going to say, just let's let's finish the merch and stuff like that, and then we'll come back to the... So here we have the game. merch. This is the bucket that's hat that we were talking about right here. Um, that's the Star Tour shirt. That's a lot of ink <laughs> mm -hmm. for a shirt. Oh, is that only... Those only things are oh, showing? Going on there. And well, good vibes going. brought up the Tomorrowland ears. I know we're talking Star Wars, but I just have to say, me too. Oh, Who wants those? I want those ears. Tomorrowland, I I everything in Tomorrowland is is awesome. That new merchandise. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, cool. it's got that retro look. It's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I bought the socks, but I kind of had to because I went on Grizzly <laughs> River Rapids the other night. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Well, I I don't see it there, Cordy. But okay. um, theme park casual. You want to talk about the Seek and find. Yeah. Uh, so an interesting little th uh, rogue attraction is at 3,000 subscribers. So congrats, nice. buddy. we got you there. Congratulations, rogue attraction. All right. So um, we always talk about how Disney, you know, everything seems to cost an arm and a leg at Disney. So what do they do? They do something for free. And it's actually kind of fun. Um, I'm sorry. So did you say free? For free. <laughs> exactly. Um, Everybody knows you, that you guys have uh, watched Barry Place. He's done the Easter egg hunts um, at the at Downtown Disney and through the two parks. Well, they've got something similar like that for Season of the Force. And it is this thing. You come and get this little card, this little sheet, and it's got a map on it and then an area for you to fill out. But what you do is you pick it up at Star Trader and then you take it over to Galaxy's Edge and hidden um in plain sight most of them um are canisters at the little spots that are marked on the map and it's your job to go and find all the canisters and each canister has a couple of the arabesh lettering markings on them and you write them down and you note which canister had what markings and then once you have found all six canisters have your markings all taken care of you go back to tomorrowland and there are signs posted throughout Tomorrowland that decode all the markings that you found that were on the canisters. And when you break the code, you rearrange the letters down here to spell out a word. And then you fill that you take that completed card back to Star Trader. And once they verify that you do have it correct, they stamp your card and then they give you a trading card. This one currently is Chewbacca. And on the back, it has the Orbesh al alphabet. And so they're going to be doing three of these, at least, that I can tell, because each one of the signs in Tomorrowland has three possible um, decoding options. So um, that leads me to believe that they're doing at least three. I don't know if they're going to mix and match at that point to where they can you know, have additional ones. But um, the cast member said that every two weeks or so, they're going to be switching out and it'll be a new card. So, um, but again, this is completely free. There's no cost to it. It's not like the egg hunt where you have to pay, what is it, $10 or whatever per. Um, and it's actually kind of fun because the canisters are not like the Easter eggs where they're big, bright, and, you know, out in the open and you can spot it just by walking by. Some of these canisters, one of them i had to ask the cast member is it over here is it over that way and she says you might want to look up and so we started scanning around uh, and finally we were able to find it so um it's it, like i said for me i'm just glad that they did something that's free that's fun and you actually get something that's kind of collectible you know mm -hmm. uh, i'm i'm going to give disney kudos for that because normally they would put something like this behind a paywall and you know make it to where you got to fork out a little bit more money but nope this was completely free like i said i had a i had actually kind of kind of had fun searching for the canisters because they're not the easiest things to find in every single spot so it's really really fun i i definitely recommend you guys um giving it a shot and seeing if you can find all the canisters 
Uh, not to, like mention, a, not to mention, I, I'm, I'm going to be trying to catch um, an extra set of cards. So I've got two right now. I'm going to try to do um, a set for me and then a set to give away. And you know, um, I know we're just kind of slipping through some of these things here, but just to quickly go through, and I'll, not, not to plug what I did last week, but if you want to see all the foods <laughs> for Season of the Forest, I did, um, there is a video on my channel where we went through the entire foodie guide. So if you want to see yeah. that, kind of go through each one. Yeah, definitely. We didn't even get to talk to, talk about the food. In fact, there I, was I saw somebody posted, um, there's chicken bao. Oh, we had, oh, we bones. had, oh my gosh. I think we tried um, just, you know, quickly, we, I got to try the banter burger. At Galactic Grill. Yeah, that's I, I caught I caught you when you were trying the the, the burger, yeah, that, and you were I saying that it was it. kind of spicy. It is very spicy. Okay, um, but I like that. And is that I, the fifty fifty uh, burger? Huh? Is that the fifty fifty burger? Fifty fifty. Oh, the I don't know. If that's maybe? the Bantha burger. That's yeah, what okay. it's called. I don't know if it's fifty fifty. Fifty fifty what? Like half buffalo meat, half beef, something like yeah. that. Oh, I think it was like beef and vegetable. Because that's what it said. It said, um, yeah, Angus beef and vegetable burger. So, um, and then it had, it had, I think it was, it's the ham, you know, like uh, the Ronto roast um, wrap, Ronto roast wrap. It's got that ham piece in it or something. Oh, yeah. The mystery meat. <laughs> mystery <laughs> meat. <laughs> and um, also um, pork belly. Ah. Uh. So mine was really fresh. It was well made. It was freezing cold and windy. So it got cold like the minute I took it off the, the counter. So that was kind of the bummer. And then um, I also, and I don't think Michael's in here, but you know, Michael um, is the one who actually ordered everything Michael did tomorrow. So we got to try those. They have the um, um, Phyrexian fries, I think is it's called, like the waffle fries. It tasted a lot like, um, but it had pork chorizo, but it was like, they had these loaded fries at Paradise Garden Grill with the same like cheese sauce. Um, so it was kind of reminiscent of that, but um, I thought those were good. I didn't try the slushies. Um, the cowgirl said those were both very good. They have a watermelon slushy and a Granny Smith apple slushy. And you get um, a Death Star um, glow cube in one and a Millennium Falcon in the other. So that's kind of cool. Nice. And we didn't have to desserts, but yeah, they have that too. Nintendo Game Dude said, Cordy, the video was helpful. The chicken bowels were my favorite. The burger was too spicy, LOL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the chicken bow, I think we had mixed reviews on that. That's over at Docking Bay 7. But we tried the chicken bow, so um, CL was there. And I, I think, um, yeah, Devin wasn't a fan <laughs> of those. Bow? Him and his bows. <laughs> so it was like, um, I wasn't a fan of those. And then um, there were all- are the, are, the, are the bow very spicy or no? No. Okay. No. Then I will try them. <laughs> yeah. It was just, you know, whatever with the flavor profile, it just wasn't for for wow. everybody. Um, hmm. But they also had a noodle dish, and I thought that was really good. And then there's a, a new punch over at Ronto Roasters that we tried as well. Um, okay. what, what is this? Devin threw it on the floor. What's that? <laughs> He's just trying to and try, trying to improve the flavor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it was. It, it's, uh, it's a good little mix. And then with that, um, if we want to lead into that, it, that we've got sippers and popcorn mm -hmm. buckets galore, a plethora, oh. if you will, of <laughs> <laughs> of uh, you know merch you can buy. And Steamboat Casual has one coming his way. That uh. Devin picked up, see on Devin picked up, but we got one here just so we can show you. And I love him so much. <laughs> does, does he make any noises when you open his mouth? Making oh yeah, shut him on. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Did he close his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Corey, excuse you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then this guy, now I forgot his name. I didn't unwrap him yet. 
That's Salacious Crumb. Salacious Crumb. Yes, I love that name. It sounds like a band name. Uh, <laughs> so there's that guy, and then. Oh. Jetta says, imagine hearing that in the middle of the night. <laughs> Our cat hates it. She's so scared of it. Uh -huh. I think as soon as she, she doesn't want to look at it. Um, and then this is the other popcorn bucket that they have. Oops, wrong way. Falcon. The Millennium Falcon. So it's a little bit different because they had the white one. Remember, like it was just kind of plain white, wasn't too fancy before. Mm -hmm. So there's a little more detail, and um, but you really can't open it. So mm -hmm. Oh, I like the old one because it has the old radar on it. Oh, did I say that? Nope. And then it lights up. Yeah, but does it light up? Oh, nice. I don't think so. Yeah, but does it light the up? The old one light up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, yeah. So these were both at Galactic Girl, but they also had them at the popcorn um, stand. But these you could mobile order. And there were lots of people, resellers with double bags going and picking up because it was it's two per person per order oh so you can place 10 orders <laughs> yeah. that didn't come out, which is kind of a bummer but um but yeah the, uh, i did it, the zippers though which, which zippers do they have they have um darth vader like his like his helmet Okay. And then um, the Grogu Dark one helmet. that we've seen before. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then the other one, there's the um, there's the Stormtrooper helmet that's coming oh, yeah. out the fourth. Yeah. It's a popcorn. Nice. Bucket. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I would have to I had to pick one up for the Rogue Attraction, and he just discovered that it has the sounds. He didn't know it had it made all yeah. the the Jabba <laughs> noises. So he's like, ooh. <laughs> It's <laughs> pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's just so much more. So, like I said, if you want to spend time to actually watch and, and go through each of those, it's it's there. But um, yeah. yeah, definitely go go to if you want to check out all the foods and everything. Go to Cordy's channel. She did a, a a podcast with it, so she went through everything. And plus, then in her live stream, um, tried a bunch of the foods. So definitely go to go yeah. to her channel to check those out if you want to get get some of the some of the deets on that. Absolutely. By the way, Paul says maybe the Sarlacc bucket has popcorn that takes 500 years to digest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too funny. All right. <clears throat> so I, I know think, we have a lot more to talk about. Well, I think we, 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 we've done a lot of talking about Star, Star Wars and what's going on there, and we'll be covering it, right? We've got Star Wars night coming up. So there's plenty, plenty more for us to talk about. Um, in future podcasts, but um, we wanted to talk about at least a little bit about the Avatar, right? The latest on mm -hmm. yes. the Avatar rumors and, and yep. So last week, um, after uh, Disney had their board meeting, uh, we had um, Bob Iger come out and talk about uh, the Avatar experience, and um, they showed a new concept art. Um, again, it's just concept, but let's go ahead and share this with you so you guys can actually see the concept art that was shared. Uh, so this is it. It's a little big, so we have to scroll down just a little bit. Um, don't miss too much. But from what you can see here, you've got people walking along a pathway. Um, they're looking off to, uh, you see, it uh, looks like some of the animals, creatures uh, down below, like on the beach area. It looks like they have a water ride here, right? You got people in a boat. Um, go, they're about ready to go under a uh, bridge towards the waterfalls. Um, it looks like there's another uh, maybe attraction or something like that in the background over there. Um, so there's there's a lot going on in this picture, obviously. Um, but this, again, is just a concept art. It's very cool. I like the way it looks. I think this would be really neat. But where the heck are they going to put this thing? <laughs> That's the question. You know, mm -hmm. And I know there's rumor and speculation as to you know, what they're going to do. There's been some other content creators out there saying, oh, well, they're going to put it where, you know, Hollywood, you know, land is and, and uh, over there at DCA. And, and they're also going to get rid of, you know, where the um, uh, buses come in and they'll put it over there. You know, once they build the new, you know, parking structure and other people said, no, it's going to be more towards, um, you know, the, uh, what is that? The um, Grizzly River area, you know, um, and the, and the, what is that called right next to it? Um, I can't think of it. 
Redwood, the Redwood Creek. Creek. Redwood Creek, thank you. Uh, and then some people said, no, no, they're probably just going to wait until, you know, Disneyland Ford and put it over there on the other side where, you know, um, uh, the downtown Disney parking lot for Simba is and um, et cetera. So uh, there's a lot of rumor speculation. Who knows what they're going to do and, and where they're going to put this. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is a pretty cool rendering. Um, but we all know what happens when we see renderings like this. I remember there's something called Tiana's Bayou Adventure that looked very cool when it first came out now it looks totally different <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's the main thing it's like you know this is concept art and even the words that bob Iger spoke said a possible avatar like experience coming to disneyland right so, so let me can i ask you guys a question i'm curious so i didn't watch any avatar until I had lots of time on my hand a few years ago, right? When we all had more time on our hands. <laughs> that was the very first time I ever watched it. Beautiful movie. And this looks beautiful too. But we, we were having a conversation about this um, a couple of days ago, but it was like, is it relevant? I don't know. Like, is it relevant? I know it's it's a blockbuster, but uh, mostly overseas, right? Like, it's it's big here too, but it's like not it's not as big as it is overseas. Like, is it just so we can have this beautiful land? I don't know. I don't know. To me, I'm like, mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the only thing I can say to that is everybody had those same thoughts when they put Pandora in at Animal Kingdom. And but it's Animal the, Kingdom. It's so cool there. <laughs> the land is a hit as far as visually stunning when people walk in and explore it. Um, the attractions, one is what some people consider one of the greatest attractions ever made. The other one is a ride that people say we waited an hour for that. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those weird things where, uh, again, this is this, this is one of the curses that we're living under with Harry Potter Land. Harry Potter Land was a very, very special phenomenon. And the fact that they were able to create this land that every single part of it lived and breathed that universe, that franchise all the way down to the shops and the restaurants and the attractions, everything worked. Mm -hmm. Disney has been trying to replicate that, trying to capture their own Harry Potter land that lives and breathes and has that universe all self-contained. And once you step in, you are just immersed in it from head to toe. Pandora does that to an extent, but does anybody go to Pandora and think, oh man, I want to eat what they had in the movie? <laughs> they don't. Is there, is there anything that you go to Pandora and go, ah, I got to get that thing that they had in the movie because I want to take it home and put it on. Put it on. Nobody does. Yeah, that. the Banshee. <laughs> and that flopped. And that's, that's the whole thing. It's like Harry Potter land was a shift in the industry and for me, it's worrisome because we're getting away from being able to have a fantastic land that where, you know, Pinocchio and Alice in Wonderland and Casey Jr. can all live together and it all makes sense because it was thoughtfully done. Mm -hmm. A land where you can have Indiana Jones, the Jungle Cruise, the Tiki Room and Bengal Barbecue and Tropical Hideaway and they all live together and it makes sense and it doesn't feel like anything is out of place. Whereas now they're all building, you know, Cars Land, as spectacular as Cars Land is, as jaw dropping and as much as I praise it, I don't go into Cars Land thinking, oh, I can't wait to drink a can of oil the way they did in the movie. That's what Harry <laughs> Potter does, though. Yeah. Harry Potter Land has yeah. you going, I want to get a butter beer. Butter beer. I want to go eat at the Three Broomsticks. I want to go to the candy shop. I want to go get my house cloak and socks and bandana Long. and hat and this and that all for the house that i belong to right disney is trying to capture that and they're they're they've been very hit and miss with whether they've been able to do it or not and that's why galaxy's edge if they can pull it out 
there's the potential that it could do something similar. Not quite, I don't think it's going to quite have the, the same effect that Harry Potter land did, but it's close, especially, like I said, once you saw all those characters walking around, there was a different life in the area. So there's, there's the potential, but yeah, the, these lands that are beautiful and amazing. It's just, I, I, I really wish they would get away from trying to create these lands based on a single franchise, like the way they are, because it's, it's very limiting. And like Cordy said, if, if I have no attachment to avatar, I'm going to go through, it's pretty. And I'm going to, kind of walk through and walk out. And I, I don't think that there's there's the potential for it to do like Harry Potter Land does. And Harry Potter Land, I've only seen one movie, never read any of the books, have no interest in it. But when I went to uh, Hogs, Hogsmeade, Hogsmeade. In, <laughs> yeah, see, I don't even know the name. I'm just, call, I always call it Harry Potter Land. When I went in Universal for the first time, I was blown away. I was enthralled. I wanted to explore every part of that land. I wanted to go through it. I was like so bummed that I only had the one day and was with a group of people and we had to keep moving because I probably would have stayed in there for hours. And I, I just don't know how any other franchise can do that. It's just such a strange phenomenon. And I really wish um, Disney would get away from that and go back to doing what Disney <clears throat> did well and giving us a theme and then letting a bunch of different stories live in there. <clears throat> so yeah, but as, as far as avatar goes i think this is part of disneyland forward i think it's going to be going in the area near the hotels oh. i don't think it's going to take over anything new or replace yeah. anything in, in the current parks <clears throat> i think so too i mean we, we in two weeks we're going to be talking a lot about this about in our next park streamers hangout because the anaheim city council is going to be voting on disneyland forward and it's going to be interesting to hear what they you know what they vote on because if they do say yes, I think we're going to hear a heck of a lot more leading up to D23, a lot of D23, and then a lot after um, regarding what, what some of their plans are and what they're planning on doing. Um, I was trying to get hold of um, Winks earlier today uh, to see if he'd gotten one of the Disneyland Ford flyers. Apparently a new flyer has gone out to um, uh, the neighbors um, who are on the backside of uh, the Disneyland Hotel. And uh, apparently, because I, I talked to one of them, I didn't get to see it. He didn't have it with him. But he said a new flyer went out from Disney to all the neighbors uh, talking about them putting in a third park and what would that mean for them and, and for the city of Anaheim and, and Disneyland. But there was no major details about it, but they were talking about building a third park, which I thought was interesting because the whole point, I thought, was Disneyland Forward, basically, you know, for at least it, the media plans was to you know just put in you know continue disneyland and dca over to the other side unless maybe they are you know talking about making a whole new park um out of the property they have for you know where the parking lots are for uh, <clears throat> stitch parking lot and simba for downtown disney employees as well as uh, for downtown disney itself so we'll have to wait and see um oh and going back i know that uh, i think alan had mentioned that this doesn't look like you know, the forest that's in the movie, but this is really focusing on the second movie and the ocean. And so I don't think they're really focusing on the forest part. They're focusing on more of the way of water um, areas uh, in this concept art. But again, it's just concept art. So we'll, we'll see what happens if when they do announce something, so. Yeah, and hope hopefully it is, you know, that they give us something different than what's in Florida. I, I, really, I really dislike when they, just do carbon copies of stuff. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, certain rides like making Minis and Mickey's Runaway Railway, that's fine to me. But if you're going to build a land, that's a ride. You're going to build a land. And, and again, the, here's the interesting thing. They, Bob, Bob Iger keeps saying it's a, you know, Avatar experience. But if you look at this concept art, you know, it says Avatar, um, uh land concept art so it's like is it going to be a land or is it going to be experience or is it going to be all of the above who knows yeah. but you're you're looking at a pretty sizable you know piece of acreage here just to put this in if it was where the hotels if it was something like that where it was a part of the resort i would feel better sure. about that <laughs> i think that would be pretty Cool. Yeah, and that's that, that's actually a good thing that you brought that up because we don't know exactly what they're intending by all of this, mm -hmm. you know. And 
if you think about it, there's a lot that hinges on what Epic Universe does. Because if Epic Universe pulls off what they're planning, which is have, have a park that can have sections that are closed off at different times and at different points and possibly have a flexible uh, rate for the park, depending on what's open and what's closed. Wow. Right. Disney could take that model into what they're doing now and say, yeah, we've got an avatar land. It's, you know, $45 to add it on. And you can go to Avatar Land, Ooh, you know, and they can use that, you know, as a separate little thing that's off to the side that's mixed in with the hotels and becomes a, you know, I, I wouldn't even call it a boutique park. It just becomes this experience. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they could be doing things like that. And with the do. rezoning, well, and that's just it. With the rezoning that they would have, they would have the entire area over where the hotels and parking lots are plus over where the Toy Story parking lot is to play with, with these it intermixed types of areas so that it's not necessarily a full-blown park. It's these isolated little experiences that they can charge one-offs on. So depending on, like I said, I, I, I think they're, they're possibly watching what Epic Universe does. And if that's a successful model, they may try to emulate it over here with with the land that they mm -hmm. with this very little bit of land that they have left um, yeah. for disneyland and uh, try to capitalize on it and and get the most out of it yeah that's a good point well alan says water park resort i'm broke but i'm sold <laughs> <laughs> patricia said uh avatar has a lot of potential to be something amazing if it comes down to the imagineers what they come out with um, to really wow the people. And then again, she enjoyed Avatar, but not part two so much. But yep, very true, Patricia. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think um, the topic that some have <laughs> experienced and some have not, so we'll fill your pain with you. Um, D23 and tickets that's so. it i'm leaving i can't talk by the way i think we might have talked about did you get tickets to d23 i did Me? not i didn't no cordy sorry no. no no all right and i know you weren't trying for it theme park casual so yeah. that leaves me <laughs> yep uh yeah so let me let me share with you my experience of uh what it was like uh to do this whole d23 ticket purchase experience so when i first joined i joined a half hour before um we could actually you know or actually they are selling tickets 12 noon and um when you they started at 12 noon you get put into a random um I don't know what you call it, uh, just a random number. So you can see on the screen here, I, I know it's kind of hard. Actually, let me see if I can blow this up real quick um, and just go to the actual screen. Yeah, doesn't help too much, but I'm going to blow it up on my screen here. So you can see I was 3,300 uh, person in line. And um, at 106 p.m., according to my phone here, uh, you know, my little guy is walking across the screen. Um, and oh and by the way this is where it was at 106 i at, at 12 38 p.m was the last message that they sent me saying that you know um you know we're currently aware of technical issues so i wasn't sure what the heck was going on so i called theme park casual and says you know what's going on i'm trying to get these tickets and it's uh, ridiculous and he said yeah apparently there's something wrong with the date of purchase so i just waited in line patiently and and of course this is 106 and then at 1.23 p.m., wow, my guy just flew across the screen, and uh, I was getting close to actually, you know, purchasing those tickets for this event. Um, and then when it was finally my time, I got this. Unable to proceed, you're unable to access the checkout process in most cases. This happens due to one of the following actions. You tried to skip the queue and directly access the checkout process. You're attempting to use someone else's place in the queue, which neither one of them I was doing, or you've already been through the checkout process and are now trying to go through again. Um, none of these actions are permitted. If you feel that you're seeing this page for other reasons, um, please click the re-enter the queue button below. There, persist. Please try another browser or clear your cookies. So the thing is, if you happen to, you know, close a page and then go back in with your login, 
it's supposed to just continue from where you left off. Uh, well, that wasn't the case at all. Um, and the next thing you know, I get this message <laughs> right afterwards saying, oh, confirm your email address. Confirmation has been sent to your email. Please check your email and, um, uh, you know, and uh, follow the link, um, uh, you know, to your account. So I went ahead and I went to my email. This is the email that I got from them. Uh, Confirm, uh, confirm account connection. So please follow the link to complete the account connection. Once I clicked on this link, then it took me to the page to purchase. Now, before we even get to this part, I'm gonna go back. Um, I actually was trying to enter the tickets and I decided I was gonna try for Friday, Saturday, and that's what I was gonna do. Well, <laughs> I put the tickets in the you know um, cart and I go in there and they're like, oh, do you want to purchase you know the backpack and all these other things? And I was like, nah, okay, maybe I'll get something for myself and my daughter because we were, we were going to go together on Saturday and then I was going to go on Friday. Well, as soon as I try to uh, go to the cart to purchase tickets, it kicked me out, said I had nothing in the cart and I had to start over from scratch. So let me try it again. So I tried it again. Same thing happened. Try it again. I must try about four or five times. By this time, I'm getting really, really frustrated. Oh, the other thing is that, um, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, once I finally, I just decided, you know, I'm just going to try to do it real quick. I will leave Friday out. I'm not even going to go to um, the Honda Center to uh, purchase the, you know, event um, or the you know program at night. I'm just trying for one day for me and my daughter, and that's it. Threw the tickets in my cart went there real quick, tried to purchase them. And it says, oh, you can't purchase these because um, you can't purchase them until August 7th. August 7th? What are you talking about? And this is what Danny was talking about, um, is that apparently someone <clears throat> from Disney had put the wrong date of purchase, and so you couldn't purchase a ticket. So I got that error message. And so I was like, well, this is ridiculous. So after I finally got it in one more time, I was able to purchase the tickets. I don't know how, but I got it through. And then once I got through, remember, I bought tickets for Saturday, right? I got a confirmation saying I got tickets for Friday, August 9th at oh my gosh. So I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Uh, I cannot believe this. So sure enough, I um, went to uh, my email and my email also, oh no, uh, was it my email? Yes, my email said that I had confirmation for Friday, August 9th. Then when I click on that link and it took me to the web page and actually got to see what I had purchased, it says Saturday. Yeah. So there was a lot of issues with purchasing the tickets uh, for D23. Um, I can definitely say it was the most difficult thing I've ever tried to do. I thought it would be, you know, fairly simple and easy, and it was not. It was, it was probably about an hour and forty-one minutes of, hmm, well, let's just say it wasn't a lot of fun, you know, <laughs> uh, going through the process. And it's really disappointing because this is not the first time Disney has had issues with, you know, trying to sell tickets to an event, you know. And it seems like lately, you know, things like Oogie Boogie, et cetera, you know, they've had issues. So. I was disappointed. Um, I'm glad I finally got a ticket for my daughter and I to go on Saturday, but I feel like I'm missing out on some of the things I really want to do because I was trying to just get through the process of purchasing these tickets. So that was my experience. What questions, comments, or sarcastic remarks? Do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, Did I, it I, I, try to get tickets? <laughs> I, I can't believe that their IT is still having these kinds of problems. I mean, this is mm -hmm. just, it, it, it's like it's its never ending with them for some reason. You would think that with all of the after hours and special ticket events that th they'd have it running decently smooth. Not to say that things can't happen, but it just seems like every single time it's just some sort of weird thing that nearly turns into a fiasco for everybody. It, this is my first time going to D23, and and to me, the whole process was so painful. I was like, I know it's not for another two years, but I really want to go through that again, you know? And obviously, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, and Ariel, my daughter, has not been through this before. She's going to experience D23, so that would be really cool. But I just was really disappointed that it was not a better experience. And it wasn't, like you said, they've <laughs> how many times do they sell magic keys? How many times do they sell special event tickets? How many times do they do things where they should have this down? And I get it. People make mistakes. Things happen. But 
this was a lot of mistakes and it was very, very painful to go through the process. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> I've heard, I heard other stories too, and it was quite not a pleasant experience. So hopefully they get it figured out, but yeah, we've seen it with other things. So it's just a shame, but, um, mm -hmm. I think, um, we're coming up on a quarter to 10 now. So pretty, pretty packed show. Um, I think if there's nothing else, we could open it up for questions from, from the chat. Sounds good. Yeah. Take okay. a few questions real quick. If anybody's got some. I know earlier, um, I think it was Sea Flights was asking about uh, dining packages for Fantasmic, and we haven't seen anything yet. So we're, we're watching. Mm -mm. We're watching for those. So I, I, my thought is May 24th is supposed to be when Fantasmic comes back. Maybe they're not so sure, right? They're not like, it's not <laughs> concrete yet that it's actually coming back on that day. So maybe that's why they're holding off. But um yeah, nothing has popped up for mm -hmm. any of them. Hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you guys have any questions, yeah. throw them in the chat and we'll be happy to read them and try to answer them for you. Poor Jordy. He says, sure, blame the IT people. <laughs> <laughs> what about all the users that do weird stuff that the IT possibly can't predict? <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Uh -huh. Uh, Brian Sevilla says, not a question, but a thought on the Star Wars fireworks show. How cool would it be if they were able to use drones for the fireworks show in Galaxy's Edge? I agree. I mean, and I think the drones actually is something that they could have during the day and just have them like cruise by behind the spires every now and then. You just see a little, you know, and just have them. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's part of what that land needs. They need those kinds of things that are unique and just add life and movement. So, yeah, it's, like I said, they just be in there with the characters, the robots, all that stuff. It gives me hope that maybe they're going to figure it out. You know, hearing that they're, they're going to, they've got the music for fireworks leads me to believe that, you know what, they may say, okay, that worked pretty good, but I think we can make it even better. And they're going to try something, you know, a little more impressive in yeah. the future. So, mm -hmm. Christmas or Halloween better for Disneyland? Rogue Attraction asks. I'd go Christmas. I'd have to say Christmas is better. Christmas, Halloween's you get pretty cool though. Halloween is it's very. Uh, close. You got it. You got to go to Oogie Boogie though in order to get the full experience mm -hmm. because there's really not right. a lot at Halloween. But at DCA. It's yeah, it? it's it's very cool. I, I, I got to admit, Cars Land at Halloween is fun. It's really cool. But again, it, I, I think you need um, you need Oogie Boogie to really finish it off because Oogie Boogie, a, a, as much as I'm a hater on the after hours, the, the hard ticket event, that one, I forgive it because Halloween events have been like that. You know, it's like, okay, it's after dark, mm -hmm. things take on a different, different air. There's a little yeah. bit of, you know, party atmosphere going on. So I, I, I'm okay with that one. And I, I have to say, I was very impressed with Oogie Boogie last year. And Theme Park Casual is not joking because he overheard us on the on the stream when Devin said, oh, they could just put Avatar Land right here at Redwood Creek Challenge. And me and Sal were like, no, what about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Villains <laughs> Grove. Villains <laughs> Grove. If you, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that, gosh, it is just that that is that is something else. So, I I. I I'm dying to go and try to, you know, get a meeting with Knots and tell them, okay, this is what you guys got to do. You've got <laughs> to do a Villains Grove, but super, super dark and eerie and creepy and make it, you know, but just go mood. Don't worry about the slasher. Don't worry about the blood and gore and everything. Like, just give us something where you're walking through and it's just got this mood that's just, you know, weighing down on you that it's so thick i i here i am again just gushing over villains grove i cannot tell you guys how impressed i mean i i go back and i watch my own video because i'm just like oh my god that was so good it was so fun so amazing to go through it so yeah i ah, 
gosh, the, now that you now that you bring that up, I'm kind of like, yeah, I know wh which one is it, Halloween or Christmas? Halloween or Christmas? Yeah, I, guess I think I'd still have to. Yeah, I think I'd still have to go Christmas. I'd I'd still have to go Christmas. I think the fireworks show is better at Christmas. You've got the parade, yeah. and there's just so much more. Oh, and it's a small world. Yeah, holiday. So mm -hmm. I think Christmas edges out Halloween. Paul says, I think all the Disneyland streamers should have their own little convention. <laughs> <laughs> and zombies, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Did you turn it off and on? I, I don't know. What you're when you about. were having trouble with your tickets. With all the, with all the tickets. Oh. You should just... <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, no kidding. Just bang it on the desk a couple of times. and. <laughs> uh, too funny. All right. Uh, let's see. What other questions do we have here? Um, Rogue mentions that they oh. had X-Wing drones in Walt Disney World for a bit pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo Game Dude says, do you think the number of celebrations throughout the year at the Disneyland Resort uh, for both DCA and Disneyland are enough? Would you add anything, replace anything? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question. That's a good question. Celebrations meaning like that, like Christmas, Halloween? Me that. All uh, Pixar Fest, um, and, or the those things. Lunar too. New Year, you've got Lunar New Year. You've got. Uh... I feel like it's been a pretty steady stream of events. Like one ends and another one starts for the most part. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah, I. So, I so what? So what are your thoughts? Do you think anything. it's too many? Do you think it's too many? Should they, you know, eliminate something? Um. Well, I don't think so. I don't. I don't know. I don't have a feeling one way or another. I mean, I love the, uh, you know, the festivals, but it's like, eh, I don't know. I will say sometimes it feels like they go from one thing to the next a little too quickly. Like it felt like we went from Lunar New Year to the Food and Wine Festival a little too fast. You yeah. know, it, it would be nice to have a little break between the food festivals. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, because it, it does feel like at times you don't get to experience the parks as just the parks. Right. Well, not yeah. only that, but I almost feel like, and I know that they have limited events, right? But, you know, we got done um, having Sweethearts events, and that was, you know, s several weeks. And then we had, you know, the Disney Channel Light, which is only one week. Um, and then uh, now we have Star Wars. It's going to be a <laughs> several, several weeks. It almost feels like we have so many events where the park's closing early, especially you know, one of the parks. Well, they, they're both closing early. And for me, I, I know this is, I love staying as late as possible, you know, till midnight. And when they're closing Disneyland early, I wish they would just keep DCA open or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. If that's, I think that's been a common theme there is, you know, if they're, if we're closing, especially, um, during sweethearts night, because they were already closing early, right. Cause it was kind of the off peak, off peak hours right. um, or time. So DCA was closing very early. <laughs> and of course, Disneyland was closing at eight. So yeah, I mm -hmm. wish they could offset that and give us a little more DCA time. Oh, I like this one too. They should have those old school 3D glasses, uh, blue and red ones for the Star Wars fireworks, kind of mix it up. But Or instead of just those, how about the ones that they have for like Christmas where you know everything, all the lights become like snowflakes? Oh, they mm -hmm. did something like that with, you know, I don't know, something Star Wars-ish. You know, that'd be kind of cool. Every little burst, it's TIE fighters coming at you. Yes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that'd be sweet. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, so Rogue Attraction's asking, how many uh, mall sabers are they releasing? I know it was 1,500 for May the 4th drop last year. Uh, you know what? I think I closed that page. Hold on. Let me go back. Do I saw no, I closed the page. I want to say I thought it was the same. Um, it was only like 1500 or something like that. Um, oh, let's see. Anything else? I don't see any other question drive hand, but I do want to say, um, you know, real quick that, um, we really appreciate everyone donating to the Chalk Walk, and the Chalk Walk has been uh, amazing as far as, you know, gaining donations. And so to everyone that's donated, 
um, or shared our link. Thank you so much. Uh, we are amazed because we have upped our goal twice and we're probably gonna have to up it again because you guys are so amazing. So thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody. This was kind of a off the cuff sort of a thing that we thought of and you know, it's kind of taken off and, and yeah. it's, it's going to be amazing to see where it ends up. So, yeah, we're already at uh, 3,495 of our $5,000 goal. So wow. I just want to say thank you, everyone. Amazing. Yeah, it's wonderful. And we're, it's not even until July. So we have a lot of time in between now and then to raise, you know, raise more money. Yeah. for the and, and any donation helps, guys. Mm -hmm. so. All right. All right. I think that's, I think we've got all of those covered. So um, thank you all again for joining us tonight on another episode of the Park Streamers Hangout. And um, we'll go around the horn one more time. Being part casual, where can everyone find you? You can find me on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Theme Park Casual. I'm planning to be in the park, hopefully, Wednesday night this week. That'll be my next live stream. Perfect. And Barry Place 28. Uh, you guys can find me on uh, YouTube, uh, X, uh, Facebook, and uh, Instagram, all at uh, Barry Place 28. Uh, I am planning on streaming on Wednesday as well at Disneyland. And then I've got quite a few streams I'm doing this week. So I'll be there uh, Friday morning and possibly Friday evening. And then I'll be streaming again. I think we're going to do a surprise trivia night on Sunday night with my little one. She wants to be involved. And then I'll be back again on Monday at Disneyland. So I got quite a few streams coming up here. Great. Perfect. Uh, Cordy in California on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and what's the other one? Is that it? <laughs> I think you have it. so many. <laughs> um, and I will be, I think I'm going to be there tomorrow and then um, Wednesday and then. Friday and then Sunday, of course. Gotta go Sunday. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, thank you all again for joining us tonight. And uh, we are signing off. So we'll see you on the next one. All Good, night, night, Good night, kids. We hope you enjoyed our amazing show tonight. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you on the next Park Streamers Hangout. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>